Hello and welcome! Today we're reacting to some more of the amazing Kurzgesagt. Today we're going to watch The Fermi Paradox, Where Are All the Aliens? Part 1 of 2. Now I have a few theories on this myself. I've seen videos on this topic before and I've read on this topic before. So I'm going to mostly comment as we go, rather than dumping it all here at the beginning. And then we can kind of sum up at the end. So let's get right into it. Are we the only living things in the entire universe? I don't think so. The observable so. universe is about 90 billion light years in diameter. There are at least 100 billion galaxies, each with 100 to 1,000 billion stars. There's Recently, no way. We've learned that planets are very common too. And there are probably trillions and trillions of habitable planets in the universe, which means there should be lots of opportunity for life to develop and exist, right? I Where love the Pokemon it? reference. Shouldn't the universe be teeming with spaceships? And the Doctor Who reference. There's gotta be life out there. There has to be. Even if there are alien civilizations in other galaxies, there's no way we'll ever know about them. Basically, everything outside of our direct galactic neighborhood, the so-called local group, is pretty much out of our reach forever. I also noticed a little bit ago about the duck with the Galactus hat. So I caught the Marvel reference too. I love all the references in this movie so far. Because of the expansion of the universe, even if we had really fast spaceships, it would literally take billions of years to reach these places, traveling through the emptiest areas in the mm -hmm. universe. The question isn't necessarily, is there life out there other than us? In my opinion, the answer to that question is, Certainly, yes, there is. Absolutely, there is. Just from a sheer amount of chances for life to form perspective, there has to be other life out in the universe. I feel. Will we ever actually encounter life, let alone intelligent life? Maybe not. The universe is big. It's very, very big. And it takes a long time to get places. So it's possible it's out there and we will just never find it. So let's focus on the Milky Way. The Milky Way is our home galaxy. It consists of up to 400 billion stars. That's a lot of stars. Counting one per second, it would take you a hundred lifetimes to count them all. Wow. There are about 20 billion sun-like stars in the Milky Way, and estimates suggest that a fifth of them have an Earth-sized planet in its habitable zone, the area with conditions that enable life to exist. The Goldilocks if zone. only 0.1% of those planets harbored life, there would be one million planets with life in the Milky Way. But wait, there's more. The Milky Way is about 13 billion years old. In the it's beginning, pretty old, it would not have and it's huge. Life because things exploded a lot. But after one to two billion years, the first habitable planets were born. And one thing that I want to talk about very briefly here is something that a lot of people don't ever seem to mention. Life basically formed on Earth as soon as it had the opportunity to. As soon as our planet stopped being a molten hellhole, and as soon as the meteor shower stopped being a consistent daily activity, in galactic time scales, so we're talking very large swaths of time. But on galactic time scales, as soon as life could happen, it did. Without hesitation, it happened. Earth is only 4 billion years old, so there have probably been trillions of chances for life to develop on other planets in the past. Mm -hmm. If only a single one of them had developed into a space-traveling super-civilization, we would have noticed by now. When it comes to civilizations too, you have to think of the complexity of materials required to become an advanced civilization, at least as far as we know. Which, of course, our sample size is very skewed because we have a sample size of one. But, as far as we're aware, you need certain things in order to become advanced, in order to create advanced technology that could potentially make you spacefaring. Some of that is materials like gold and some of the other heavy elements that can't happen and cannot occur or at least would be exceedingly rare in the early days of the universe before they could have been created in the supernovas. So in my mind, there is a time limit where that limit is, I couldn't say, but there is a time limit for when an advanced civilization could have first came up. 
What would such a civilization look like? There are three categories. A type one civilization would be able to access the whole energy. Ah, we learned about planet. these the Kardashev scales. We're currently around 0 0.73 on the scale, and we should reach type one sometime in the next couple of hundred years. That was a very type good video, by the way. Check it out if you have it. Capable of harnessing all of the energy of its home star. This would require some serious science fiction, but it is doable in principle. Concepts like the Dyson Sphere, a giant complex surrounding the sun, would be conceivable. Type 3 is a civilization that basically controls its whole galaxy and its energy. An alien race Galactus. of advance would probably be Galactus. Uh -huh. Why should we be able to see such an alien civilization in the first place? If we were to build generation spaceships that could sustain a population for around 1,000 years, we could colonize the whole galaxy in 2 million years. Sounds wow. like a long time, but remember, the Milky Way is huge. So if it takes a couple of million wow. years to colonize the entire galaxy, and there are possibly millions, if not billions, of planets that sustain life in the Milky Way, and these other life forms have had considerably more That's a time blink than we've had of the then, eye in gal where galactic are the years. This is the Fermi paradox, and nobody has an answer to it. But we do have some well, ideas. Let's talk about filters. A lot of people have an answer to it. We just don't know if they're right or not, but there's a lot of answers out there, a lot of theories. A filter in this context represents a barrier that is really hard for life to overcome. They come in various degrees of scary. One, there are great filters and we have passed them. Maybe it is way harder for complex life to develop than we think. The process allowing life to begin hasn't yet been completely figured out and the conditions required may be really complicated. Maybe in the past, the universe was way more hostile and only recently have things cooled down to make complex life possible. One thing that we have going for our advantage as well, specific to Earth, is we have the gas giants in our solar system, which have huge gravitational influence. So when it comes to objects like asteroids and whatnot that could have potentially been aimed at the Earth, there's a huge chance of them, one, to hit the sun and get sucked in by the sun's gravity, but then two, you have the gas giants as well, which just act like magnets for these types of things. So it's quite possible, and I'm theorizing here a little bit, but it's quite possible that Earth sustained a lot less asteroid impacts than it would have if those gas giants had not been present. And from my understanding, which may be incorrect, but from my understanding, those gas giant type things are not super common, at least not in the size and scale and multiples that we have here in our solar system. So that's something to consider that a lot of other planets don't have that would otherwise be considered habitable. This would also mean that we may be unique, or at least one of the first, if not the first, civilization in the entire universe. Two, there are great filters, and they are ahead of us. This one would be really, really bad. Maybe life on our level exists everywhere in the universe, but it gets destroyed when it reaches a certain point, a point that lies ahead of us. For example, awesome future technology exists, but when activated, it destroys the planet. The last words of every advanced civilization would be, this new device will solve all of our problems once I push this button. If this is true, <laughs> then we are closer to the end than yeah. the beginning of human yeah. existence. Or There's quite a few things that could potentially end life, at least advanced life on this planet. And unfortunately, as a species, we aren't doing a huge amount about those things. Now, there's certain individuals that are going above and beyond and certain groups of people that are going above and beyond to try and address some of these issues. But as a whole, our species isn't doing all that much. And that could very well be our undoing. We're the only advanced civilization we know of, but we have to also use what we learned about, you know, us to apply it to others because that's all we got. And chances are, you know, life formed elsewhere is working with the same materials. You would imagine it's going to develop somewhat similar to us. So they're going to face some of the same struggles that we do. So you would imagine that some of these challenges like nuclear war, climate change, the 
dangers of, say, artificial intelligence, those types of things are probably things that others will face as well. I think that's a totally reasonable expectation that they're going to face that. And maybe this is not specific to humans, but truth be told, we are greedy and we are evolved to be greedy. Maybe there is an ancient type 3 civilization that monitors the universe and once the civilization is advanced enough, it gets eliminated. See, I could see humans doing that. That's why that's scary, is because if you imagine that we're the type 3 civilization and we had technology that basically made us living gods, I could see us doing that. That's why this theory is so scary. It's feasible. In an instant, maybe there is something out there that it would be better not to discover. There is no way for us to know. One final thought, maybe we're alone. Right now, I don't we think have so. no evidence that there's any life besides us. Nothing. The universe appears to be empty and dead. No one sending us messages, no one answering our calls. We may be completely alone, trapped on a tiny moist mud ball in an eternal universe. Does that thought scare you? If it does, you're having the correct emotional reaction. <laughs> if we let life on oh. this planet die, perhaps there will be no life That's where that saying comes from. Life will be someone gone, just commented forever. that. If this is the case, we just have to venture to the stars and become the first Type 3 civilization to keep the delicate flame of life existing and to spread it until the universe breathes its final breath and vanishes into oblivion. Mm -hmm. The universe is too beautiful not to be experienced by someone. This video was made... What a beautiful video. What an absolutely beautiful video. I agree with every point that they brought up. Now, personally, to me, if we are alone... That's not a scary thought to me. To me, that is actually amazing news because then we can become that scary type three civilization that's ending others as they get too advanced to avoid any threats from arising. <laughs> it's sad because it's totally feasible. But yeah, really, I mean, those, those are the big things. It, civilizations, just the way that we know of in order to get to be an advanced civilization, you have to hoard resources. You have to expand and cover what's available to you as living space. Humans have done this. You have to become somewhat aggressive because you need to survive long enough as a species in order to become an advanced species. So if you don't have that aggression, you're never going to make it. You have to hoard and be greedy. You have to. Those traits don't just magically disappear after it's been baked into our DNA and evolved over millions and millions of years, it's part of us. And it's feasible to think that those traits are part of any advanced technology, or I'm sorry, any advanced civilization that would arise. Hopefully we're either one of the first or, and or, we can get over the challenges that face us. We can figure out what we're doing when it comes to nuclear war. We can figure out what we're going to do about climate change. We can figure about, out about our stance on automation, artificial intelligence, those types of things. And hopefully we make it past those filters.